Hello and welcome back everyone, Stadium Reviews episode number 9 today as we're going to the home stadium of the Chicago White Sox guaranteed rate field in the south side of Chicago, Illinois because they're taking on my second favorite MLB team, Cleveland Indians. Wait a second here, wait a second. Cleveland Guardians, that's right. Anyways, we got a fun episode, had a really fun time in this ballpark, really enjoyed it. Let's get into the episode. Guaranteed Rate Field in the south side of Chicago, Illinois opened its doors in 1991 under the name as Kaminsky Park. In 2003, it was renamed to U.S. Cellular Field, and then adopted its current name in 2016 as Guaranteed Rate Field. The ballpark currently holds 40,615 spectators and is located just west of the major highway I-94. The stadium set up in a very symmetrical layout because in the early 90s, ballpark design wasn't yet to the neoclassical era that started with Camden Yards in Baltimore, but have moved past the 70s Coliseum era parks. Wait, but this is Chicago. Before the game, we gotta take in some Chicago deep dish pizza. Alright, now getting to the stadium, my preferred method is taking a CTA train. There's a stop on the red line, Sox and 35th, which takes you right outside the ballpark, and you have to walk across a bridge that goes over the I-94 expressway to get to the stadium. However, in the parking lot outside the stadium, there's a lot of tailgating and partying going on. Oh, David, David didn't yeah, a brown flag outside the... Uh... In the parking lot outside of the main gates, there's a home plate engraved into the ground, marking the location of home plate at former Kamitsky Park, which stood from 1910 to 1990 and was an old school jewel box style ballpark. The main entrance of the ballpark is actually detached from the stadium itself. It's a separate structure off to the north side of the stadium, which then takes you to a bridge which goes across the road into the main concourse of the stadium. On this bridge, you can get a good look at the tan facade on the outside of the ballpark. What's really weird is that from here, you can't change your level. They check your ticket when you walk into the stadium, and then again when you walk to the 100 level or whatever level you happen to be on, which doesn't allow you to move freely from level to level of the park. The 100 level concourse was very, very crowded, but it was also a sellout crowd since the White Sox have been playing really well. And according to some fans I spoke to, this was one of the best crowds they've had in about 10 years. I've been told that from the upper level concourse, you can have a really good view of the downtown Chicago skyline. Well, here it is from the 100 level, since we couldn't get up to the higher levels. Out in the right field concourse, they have this giant goose head because it's all sponsored by the Goose Island Beer Company, which is a local Chicago beer. They also have this bar that's inside an old CTA train car. Upon entering the seating bowl, one thing they immediately noticed were the giant banners and structures in the outfield that blocks people from inside the stadium viewing outside and the highway right beside it. This also probably alleviates some of the noise caused by surrounding traffic. I thought this was a really good and subtle way to solve the issue of having not the best surrounding scenes with just a concrete jungle all around. This also gives it a really small enclosed view which makes you feel like you're right in the action and that everyone's real close together which makes for a really intimate setting to watch a ball game. Some other cool outfit elements include these old style light fixtures, which keep the same metallic piping design as the whole outfield frame. And of course the massive scoreboard in center field is topped with seven pinwheels. These are to pay homage to the original pinwheels put up in 1960, which was baseball's first exploding scoreboard. The pinwheels would rotate every time the White Sox hit a home run, and they still carry on that tradition today with the modern pinwheels. <laughs> Another tradition carried over from the old Comiskey Park is the outfield shower that was originally installed in 1976 to cool fans down during hot summer days. The shower was then relocated to the new stadium when they built it in 1991. Close to the shower in center field, they have a lot of statues commemorating an old owner and several old players for the White Sox organization. I also really love the entrance sign to the bleacher sections, as it had a great historic feel to it. The seating arrangements laid out in a pretty cookie cutter format, with lower level seating followed by suites and clubs in the middle level. On top of that is the upper section, which is partially covered by a black roof which creates a really nice aesthetic using the same black piping seen in the outfield. Something interesting that I noticed is that although the park seems to be rather symmetrical, the left field seating has several sections of bleachers, while the right field section doesn't have any bleachers and is all individual seats. If you do like private seating, there seems to be a plethora of options all around the ballpark with several different features and amenities. 
I really enjoyed the production of the game as a whole. As a visiting fan, it was really nice to see the Cleveland skyline up on the scoreboard before the game. I think the Sox did a really good job with the team intro. <laughs> Speaking of production, this scoreboard dance-off was absolutely top-notch. With that being said, White Sox fans were actually also top notch. It was definitely the best MLB atmosphere I've ever attended. The fans were so enthusiastic and passionate about the game, and several times during big at bats, everyone would be standing and cheering, willing their players on, which is something you don't see at a whole lot of MLB stadiums in the regular season. I also got the opportunity to talk to a lot of different White Sox fans there at the game, and I must say, White Sox fans are some of the nicest, especially being in a Cleveland jersey. Everyone was so excited to talk to me and ask me about how I enjoyed their stadium. I think a lot of it had to do with the recent name change from Indians to Guardians, because lots of people wanted to ask for my opinion on that. But I love how engaging and enthusiastic the whole fan base was, especially to outsiders. For ballpark food, well, I was quite full after that pizza, but still had to try a locally branded hot dog, which was pretty good. The game itself was an absolute thriller. Back and forth, high scoring, and several lead changes. But Cleveland ended up edging out the White Sox 12-11 to take the victory, which sent me home rather happy. Have a look at this win probability chart that Cleveland posted on Twitter just to see how crazy of a game it was. On to souvenir time. So I ended up with a few goodies from the first game booth. But for every baseball stadium I go, I always collect a baseball, and I found this really cool nostalgic looking baseball. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. I had a blast at this stadium. It's totally underrated. I really enjoyed it so much. So thank you all you Southsiders for a great time. Anyways, be sure to subscribe so you can watch more of these videos because we have a few more baseball ones to come out before the end of the baseball season. Anyways, I will see you then. Bye.